Okay, this is going to be a walkthrough of a Wiley journal for coding on top factor. This assumes that you are familiar with how uh, the top guidelines are scored. Uh, this form is where you start, uh, and I assume you have a journal, so you put in your email address. Uh, the journal that I will do is the Journal of Organizational Behavior. Uh, try to make sure that you use uh, the actual official name, particularly if uh, from, through the Web of Science database. The journal ISSN uh, is uh, often uh, linked right on the page if you don't already have it uh, in your database from uh, how you extracted which articles or which journals you're going to code. Uh, I have this one here, so I'll put in the ISSN. Uh, the society f affiliation, when you go to the website, for most of the websites, it will indicate uh, right on the website whether it's affiliated uh, with a society. This one does not show that, so I will leave it blank uh, for now. Uh, the journal's email editorial contact, uh, that also is usually available like in Wiley's case, under the About, there's often a contact address. So, and there is an email address uh, for the contact information. So I will grab that and enter it there. The Editor-in-Chief email contact uh, might or might not be available. It is not uh, available on the journal website, as far as I could tell. Uh, they do have the uh, editor's name. So for now, I'll just drop the editor's name in there uh, since I don't have the email contact to facilitate uh, a coder being able to find that email address. PermaCC is uh, a service that creates a permanent version uh, of uh, a web page uh, like uh, the Internet Archive Wayback Machine service. Uh, so the page, if you have PermaCC, then what you do is you find the author guidelines, the, where all the policies are uh, for that journal, and uh, then you copy that page uh, URL and enter it uh, into PermaCC to create a permalink. Uh, and then that's what you will enter, and that will have a permanent version of what you coded at the date and time that you coded it. If you do not have a PermaCC account, uh, which will be common, then you just copy the link uh, to the page that has the author guidelines so that someone can verify your codings easily. So I'll take that PermaCC address, a URL that I just entered, and put it there. Okay, so the remainder now is to go through the journal web page. Uh, for all of the author guidelines and look for content re relevant to the top guidelines. It is common uh, at this stage that there are, if there's anything stated, uh, that they're stated in pretty predictable sections. So what I do uh, is scan uh, the sections and as you get familiar with any particular publisher's formatting, uh, it will get very quick uh, to get to the relevant places in their uh, author guidelines for where there might be uh, information of interest. So I'm just scrolling through here uh, looking for anything that might have something to do with top guidelines policies. Uh, for the most part it's formatting issues and things relevant to what, um, what you can enter. Uh, here is information about the data set, prior use of a data set. Okay, if data set in the manuscripts have been used in a previously published study, or if the data set is currently under review elsewhere, the authors need to provide data will need, so will, that's a good signal of uh, requirement, to provide a data transparency table as part of the submission process. This will not be part of the submitted manuscript. Uh-oh. This table should list all the variables from the data set coming. Okay, so that's very nice that they are asking people, the authors, to give information about the data from previously used study, but it's not actually part of the manuscript and it's not actually asking you to cite that prior data, so it's not relevant to data citation uh, top, but it looked like it could have been. Uh, so we continue, peer review and acceptance, that's not relevant. Human subjects, it's all good, but that's not relevant. 
clinical trial registration. Okay, the journal requires clinical trials prospectively registered. That's good uh, for pre-registration, um, but it is not for all submissions. So I will copy this just for completeness sake, because I'm going to guess that we are not going to have anything else said about uh, pre-registration. And I'm going to paste that uh, as the information that is available uh, about issues related to study pre-registration. And I'm going to say clinical trials only are required. Uh, because that's just for clinical trials, not for submissions in general, that still gets a rating of zero. Uh, if they require saying whether any work was pre-registered or require pre-registration for any work published in a journal, then I will revise up that score. But for now, that's what information we have uh, as we're going through the, um, uh, the policies. Conflict of interest, not relevant. Funding, not relevant. Authorship. Data sharing, data accessibility. Okay, that's good. The journal encourages, uh-oh, uh, authors to share data and other artifacts supporting in public repositories. Authors should, uh-oh, include a data accessibility, state accessibility statement, including to the repository that they used. Okay, that and then all accepted manuscripts may elect to publish a data availability statement. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, encourage, should, and may, which means there's not really a policy of must or will uh, in there. So that is relevant because it is talking about uh, data shared, sharing and making data accessible, uh, but it is not uh, requiring data dis disclosure of whether the data are shared or not. So I'm going to take that relevant content, place it in the data transparency justification, uh, and all, even though they have all of that stuff, it's still a zero. Data sharing is encouraged, uh, but it is not required to say whether the data is available. They say you may say whether the data is available or not, and it is not required in sharing the data. So it is encouraged, not required. So that gets a zero still, unfortunately. If you have shared data, da, 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 sample statements, if published, will be placed in the heading. So in more context there, just providing information about what they will do. Ethics, ORCID, licensing, uh, all of that is interesting stuff, but not relevant for top. Publication process after acceptance, post-publication, sharing, promoting. Oh boy, we get to the end and nothing else uh, was mentioned. Nothing about data citation, nothing about uh, materials, nothing about pre-registration of analysis plans. So we can go back uh, to the uh, ratings. Data citation gets zero, no mention, nothing to quote. Uh, analytical code, no mention of that, so it gets a zero. Materials, no mention of that, nothing to quote. There was no mention of reporting guidelines like Consort or Prisma or otherwise, uh, so no uh, score there. And nothing for analysis pre-registration. Notice the study versus analysis pre-registration. Clinical trials doesn't require as much comprehensiveness on analysis pre-registration as would, one would like, uh, so there's no point in uh, duplicating the content there. Uh, they don't mention anything about analysis pre-registration. Also don't mention any policy about replication, so that gets a zero. No information about publication bias, results blind reviewing, registered reports wasn't mentioned as a submission option, and no indication uh, that badges are offered uh, at the journal. So we submit that, and that is uh, the full submission uh, for an article of that type. Uh, so that is the tour of a Wiley journal.